good Friday afternoon, evening, wherever you might be. Victor, how are you doing? Still alive. Still alive? Well, That's... you're a week out from KubeCon, so yes, you're still alive. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, getting complicated. Complicated? Too many things also, to do before I go there. Yeah. Is one of those things actually buying clothes this time, or you're still going to buy clothes once you get there? Uh, that depends on what I pack. The answer to the question is I found out at the airport or at the hotel. Hi, by the way, my name is Darren. This over here is Victor, and we are the co-host of a podcast called DevOps Paradox. That releases on Wednesdays at 6 a.m. Eastern. We'll talk about this week's episode in just a few moments. I don't think we've had as much chatter about this episode. Well, we've had other episodes that have chatter, but this one has been sort of very interesting to watch. Okay. We'll, we'll, What's we'll talk about happening? That. Well, we'll talk about it in just a minute. Okay. Martin, good to see you. Uh, by the way, uh, Victor, I didn't even tell you. So we're only on the DevOps Paradox YouTube channel today. We're not on Twitter, we're okay. not on LinkedIn, we're not anywhere else. We're just in one place only. I was toying with also putting it over on DevOps Toolkit, and I figured, you know what? Uh, I'll wait. Let's keep it quiet because we're going to be gone for two weeks, by the way, just in case you weren't aware. Uh, next week, Victor's traveling. The next Friday is the Friday after KubeCon. And I'm debating about the Friday after that because technically that's Good Friday, I think. I have to look at the calendar again, and I might be out. So we're definitely gone for two weeks. We might be gone for three. We'll see how it plays out. I don't know. Hey, there's a new name. Do you know that name? Alexander? Alexander Hi. Uh, Ilic. That's a, okay, that's uh, also Serbia, Croatia, one of those places, right? You, you have to tell me. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing. I don't know. He would need okay. to say because it's not such a clear division. You know, it's similar like, hey, Texas and uh, North ah. Virginia, not the yes, same, but Serbia. almost. You're right. Serbia. There we go. Good call. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and just get into it. I did not have any AI stuff to talk about today until 30 what seconds ago. What happened to you? Until 30 I'm, seconds I'm ago. I'm used to you uh, until 30 seconds ago. Okay. okay. Until 30 I'm, seconds I'm ago, literally. I'll, I'll explain it once we get there. So we're gonna, we are going to talk a little bit of AI. We might do something live at the end. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this week's podcast. Not that. This. Uh, we had Abby Bangser on from Centasso to talk about the platform maturity model, platform engineering maturity model. Uh, the thing I was talking about earlier that threw everybody off was Fortnite. You didn't <laughs> understand what Fortnite was, or at least you said you didn't understand what Fortnite was. It's a game, I guess, or a Fortnite. Depends on whether there is a T, I don't know how it's spelled. Anyways. It's close to the same but not the same. Anyway, we had Abby on talking about the, uh, from the CNCF, platform engineering maturity model. Uh, yes, platform engineering is still a thing, just in case nobody was aware. If you go out to the podcast or if in your podcast player, there should be a link off to the platform engineering maturity model, which we've talked about before, just not in great detail. Uh, but take a read through. It's, a, it's interesting. It's a really good effort. Really helpful, I think. And I'm very glad that Tabi and quite a few other people uh, worked on it. It's uh, it makes a lot of sense. Can I say it that way? It just makes a lot of very pragmatic. Let's put it that way. It was very pragmatic. So anyway, that is this week's. Next week's I haven't even edited yet. I have it loaded up in the editor, but I haven't started editing yet, so I don't even remember what it's about. So we'll see when next Wednesday comes around what it is. Okay. A couple of project announcements. SigStore is starting its graduation process. Yay. Interesting. We'll see how that plays out. Actually, here, let's, because four days ago, let's go to the bottom. Uh, looks good to me. Seven of nine have approved this request four days ago. Yeah, so, the process, uh, how to graduate changes or, or already yeah. changed, so... It's becoming tougher uh, to graduate, actually, than it was before. Yep. I'm not sure whether that applies to those that are already on, in the process, uh, but it's becoming more complicated. And probably 
it's it's a good thing, right? Yeah. Looking at this, it looks like it was merged already uh, four days ago. So technically, it's graduated. Yay. When I first saw this, it wasn't graduated yet. It had just started. So that's six doors. So congratulations. And that's from the. No, no, OS I, 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 I might be wrong, but I think that that's not that it graduated, but the uh, the the application the process for the is, process was merged, accepted. Yeah, correct. Uh, another project in the OSSF is Guac. Not not Guac, but Guac. Graph for understanding artifact composition. So this was made open source and then is submitted to be incubating. So we'll see how nice. this plays out. A lot of people from Google, or there was a lot of, so Guac was created by Kasari, Google, Purdue University, and City, like Citibank. So we'll see how this plays nice. out. So that's that's Guac. So two open SSF projects, sort of one's graduated in something, E-D-N-I-N-G, I don't know which one. Um, and then this one is just getting started in its life. One thing that's over, we saw a GCP do this a while back. Now AWS is saying, hey, you're leaving us? We're not going to charge you an arm and a leg to leave. Ah, okay. Uh, I misunderstood the title. I thought it's now we're going to charge. Okay, that's actually no. amazing. That's amazing. They, they have that's... dropped the egress fees for that, I mean, that purpose. That was... That was that was long time coming, right? Because too many companies were afraid of that, right? I mean, of course, customers that are already there, they're there. But uh, for the newcomers, that's uh, that's an important thing now, right? The kind of am I going to be really locked or no? Besides technical locking, right? So, well done, AWS. So I guess we'll uh, see how it all plays out. So that means of the big three, only Azure stands. I don't know if ever is Azure is Azure still charging for the for egress. I would, I would have to assume so, because there hasn't been a yeah. podcast or a blog post about it. So I don't know. They may never have, but it seems like if they never were charging for it, we would have heard about that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, okay. Congrats, AWS. The Git Zeitgeist. This is a post from the guys at Git Butler. If you haven't watched Scott's po uh, what is it? Scott's session from Fosdom, you have to watch it. So this this is Scott. And how is Git used? Here's the thing that they found. Primarily from the command line. And then in the That's editor. Expected. Yeah. Then built into the editor a standalone GUI client, and I don't use Git. Interesting answer. What's the number there? 0.4 percent. 0.4. Yep. Are you? What are you using? CBS. I mean, it depends. You know, kind of. There, there might be some special cases. I, I don't know what where it stands now, but for example, back in the day, Perforce was commonly used for those who actually want to version very large files. I, I'm not sure whether that's still the case. So maybe it's not that, I mean, some people must be still on SVN, but maybe there are people with special requirements. I hope that that's the case. That's true. Perforce. If you're on SVN, then, then quit, please move somewhere, go somewhere else. Don't, don't stay there. You're right about Perforce. Perforce is great at large files. Get, you see yeah. that in gaming all the time. So that's exactly the so place. I hope that that's those 0.4%. Anyway. Good, good what, long what post. What would be interesting mm -hmm. to me, data is to, right? If you ask who is using Git, everybody's using Git. But who is using only Git would be a better question, right? Because let's say that I might be in my company still using SVN. But the fact that I use Git for something else or for one project or for something I use privately already puts me into the Git number, right? Ex exclusive Git number, even though it's not like that. How do you use it primarily? Let me tell you how I use mine and see if it's even close to you. When I'm cloning, I'm command line. When I'm okay. doing operations on the branches, like deleting branches, merging branches, whatever, I'm on the command line. 
But okay. if I've made changes to files in the editor, I just pop over in the editor, do a diff, and then commit and push there. No, I'm fully command line. Uh, I go You're to, fully command line. Okay. Uh, command line and you, uh, web UI. Uh, you know, when it's issues, for example, things like that, I, I prefer web UI. Uh, I'm using heavily GH, CLI. I still haven't made the big jump over to that. I probably should look at that again. I mean, I still use Git for the typical commands, you know, add, commit, yeah. push, and stuff like that. But when it's, let's say, create uh, create repository, there is no Git command for that. So I use GH for the stuff that doesn't exist in, in Git CLI. Oh, OK. Yeah, see, I still go to the UI for creating the repositories. Because most of the time, it's like I've got to think about it anyway. There's things I need to do. So the UI is fine, but I probably have done the same thing over and over again a couple hundred times. So I probably could turn that into a script and just give it a name and let it take care of all the other things I do. That makes too much yeah, sense, I mean, right? Yeah, it's create, repo, name, and dash dash public or private. That's it. Yep. Martin brought it up here too, Clearcase. I'd forgotten about Clearcase too. Yeah, Clearcase and Perforce were the two bigs. Sadly. Um, well, not sadly. They, they have their use cases. They're good. What's frustrating about Git? Complexity and usability, branch management, commit management, merge conflicts, blah, 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 blah. Okay, anyway, they go through this. It's so strange it's a, that uh, there is a, people have bigger, at least according to that survey, if you go back up, commit management is a bigger problem than merge, merge conflicts. Really? That feels weird to me. Merge conflicts are the worst ever anywhere. Exactly. I mean, commit <laughs> is commit, kind of like, there is nothing special about the commit. Well, let's see it's what they say words. about, let's just see what it says here. So branch, okay, here we go. Branch or commit management. Frustrations, branch management. Okay, here's commit management. Remembering to make atomic commits. Okay. Okay, creating beautiful commit messages and cherry picking changes can be time consuming. Okay. Wide variation, usefulness of context provided in co commit messages. Long run history loses context due to external, okay. Having to look up how to undo add commits. <laughs> okay. Do you trust it? Hard to remember. Yeah. Dash dash hard, right? <laughs> well, here's the thing. That, all right. This this is me. I had this problem this week. I had that exact problem this week. Because I didn't. Well, how do I say this? Because I don't do that very often, I just couldn't remember it. I remember it was reset, but I couldn't remember everything else after the reset. It was like, do I do hard? Do I add in uh, head with it? Do I can't, you know, I just couldn't remember because it's not an no, everyday that, thing to me. That's the thing. If it's not an everyday thing, it's not a problem. Right. right? Because if twice a year you're going to reset your comments, come on, it's not a problem to Google it. I do it as well. I don't reset comments often and I Google it. Now, if it's something that you do frequently, then it becomes a prof problem, but then you also remember, right? Now, I do admit, Git is a horrible tool. It's the best thing I have, but uh, there are 57,000 ways how to push something and how to merge something and things like that. It's not a good tool, and I'm welcoming, welcoming improvements, but uh, I don't buy some of the reasons, to be honest. Merge? problem. Commit? Ah. Okay. So anyway, good post. Take a look at it. By the way, I did the same thing again this week that I did last week. If you're watching live right now and you're on YouTube, all the links we're going through today are already posted there. So you can click through and check them out whenever you want to. But listen to us in the background. Don't, don't forget about us. Uh, next up, there was an article from Luca titled, Shipping Quality Software in Hostile Environments. I read this, it's talking about tech debt and actual harm, tech bankruptcy, just an interesting story. Uh, not too long, but you know, it's, it's at least one soda, maybe two sodas, depending on how much you, soda you drink. Uh, their concept here though was, that wraps up here, time to ditch the tech debt concept. You're starting on your first soda, good. Um, I'm assuming that's soda, mm. but anyway. Check it out, I thought it was a good read. Um, I'm going to give you three guesses 
who this next post is from, and the first two don't count. Are you ready? Shot him. Turn. <laughs> you know what gave it away? It has a very recognizable icon over there, yes. Yep. That's So anyway, they're talking about how they build open source. And they got to 100,000 stars. Congratulations, by the way. I was working with VHS this week. Uh, fair warning, if you don't work with VHS and you start working with it, you're going to run into... How do I say this politely? You're going to run into differing issues on Mac OS versus Linux. I'm just going to leave that the way it is. V VHS is one of the projects, I mean, few of the projects I haven't considered using, it didn't fit my use cases, but VHS is something that I was very, very excited, but that excitement dropped quickly. Kind of, I found, I don't know how it's now, but I found it relatively tough to, kind of too much work to, to use it. It's, it is a lot of work. But but, and I had to hack around to get things to work the way I wanted. The biggest thing, and they've had a open issue for it for a few years, is they don't have the concept of wait. Mm. So I was installing a package. And sometimes that package would install within 20 seconds, and sometimes it would install within 60 seconds, depending on which, mir which mirror I was getting the package from. So I ended up giving it a sleep of 75 seconds, so I covered the window. But now I need to go back in and cut out because it actually went fast on 20 seconds. Now I need to go and cut out roughly 45 seconds of, of dead air just sitting there. That's that's the tough one. I still have fond memories. I haven't used it before, but I found it more useful. The, there was a service that transforms it to GIF uh, that you just run in your terminal. To my ask you do nothing, basically. Ask Inema, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. I should look at that again. Because it, it, it requires no work, kind of nothing, yeah. right? Just records your stuff. Yep. Anyway, that's not why we're here, though. We're talking about congratulations to 100,000 stars. That's well uh, done. And they, they go through the whole thing here. Again, this is another really good understanding of, okay, why are they doing this? Branding. Okay, let's stick with branding here for just a second. Wait, what's at the bottom? Why am, why am I at the bottom? Oh, oh, there we go. There you go. Hmm. YouTubers using gum art. Huh? See? <laughs> Think bigger. But going back to here, their branding is second to none, in my opinion. Yeah. Very original. Nobody is even close. And if you look at it, you'll understand why. Video, they draw inspiration from video games, art, beauty, family art, and really Sanrio. Do you know what Sanrio is? No idea. Hello Kitty. Okay. That's now you'll never unsee Hello Kitty from this anymore, I don't think. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, good post. Congratulations to everybody at Charm. We are trying to get in touch with them to have them come on the show. We just yeah. haven't gotten there yet. Well, we've gotten there, but we just haven't heard back yet. So anybody from Charm watching, listening, contact us. You know where we are. I'm especially interested in their goals as a company. That's, that's a mystery to me, kind of. Amazing projects, small ones. I'm having trouble imagining, okay, kind of like, what's the, what's the exit? Kind of like, what's the, what's the business plan behind it? There must be something. Okay, that's true. Okay, oh, this was interesting. So do you use code owner files? You probably don't because you're like me. You're not collaborating with many people. I mean, in cross-plane we use owners. In cross-plane, yes. yes. Right, right. But just your repos, not so much. Well, your check this private out. stuff, no. Yeah. Okay, check this out. So code, owner, code owners, you're really used to it. But now they have something called clean owners. It helps you maintain your code owner's file mm -hmm. automatically. So we'll keep it, you can schedule it to run. And then what will happen is it will give you a PR on code owners to clean things up. Like those 
who haven't had activity in a long while and things like that, I guess. What, whatever it is, yeah. I, I haven't gone into it yet to look myself. Nice. So that's called clean owners. Uh, a couple of quick tools. Fork sweeper. Fork. I have to slow down to say this. Fork sweeper. Remove unused GitHub forks. So what does this do? Okay. All right, so you need you have to have a GitHub uh, access token. Okay, that's fine. So what you can say is I can delete forked repos. Just delete them. That'd be nice. All the repos that you forked, I guess. That, that I forked, correct. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I've been working on this. Now I don't work on it anymore. <coughs> Just go run this. Um, well, I can tell you, I've got a lot. I've got probably 10. 10 or 15 Jenkins forks, plugins, core, stuff like that. So if I ever decided, hey, peace out, Jenkins, you know, I'm, I'm done. Instead of having to chase them all down, now I could just say, run this, and gets rid of all my forks. Or you it's, can look for... There is no limit to number of public repos, right? Correct. Why would you clean it? Just to clean up after myself, just because. Yeah, fair enough. Right, I just... Well, one the, here's a reason why you should clean up a fork, in my opinion is if for some reason somebody bookmarked you and then you ghost whatever the fork is, but they're still looking at you, not keeping track of, oh, wait, there's another thousand commits that have come in since then. It's like That's true. I tend to now, when I think about it, very often I would delete the fork and fork again. That's my... Yeah. So if I, if I fork something... And I'm finished and I'm not working for a while on that something, I always delete the fork and start over. It's so much easier than merging with upstream. Exactly. So this is one of those things of, I don't know, there's, so anyway, you can do delete max page, older than days, owners, whatever. Yeah, I can see so, how, how nice that would be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's fork sweeper. I saw this somewhere, I think it was LinkedIn. Have you heard of New Shell? Have you ever heard of the shell? No. Okay. So it's a shell that will run anywhere, including Windows. And okay. you can work the within the shell, the same across all of them. And it also runs inside of Nix. There's a Nix profile for it. Okay. Now so, I'm interested. Oh, I figured because that one. I, I'm starting to lose the interest to tools that are not do not have Nix package, to be honest. Yep. So like in this case, ls, pipe it where size is greater than 10 meg, sort it by, pipe it, sort by modified. So the commands, ls, where, sort by, and you can get all of this right there without even having to do any kind of, like this typically would have been a bash script. Yes. But now you can just do it as a one-liner. Oh, okay, so it's kind of, it's not a different shell, but rather com additional commands, I guess. No, it is a different shell. This is your okay. new shell. This this would take over ZSH for you. Okay. Or Nix shell, I guess, technically. But you go into yeah. Nix shell and then go to ZSH. Anyway, yeah. it's called new shell. I haven't no, had time to out. install it and see how it goes, but it looks interesting. Uh, one other tool. Oh, I'd forgotten one. Okay, so this is called, I don't know what the app is, the actual name of the app. I don't know if it's called AnyType or if it's called the Everything app. Are you familiar with Obsidian, even if you don't use it? The, the concept Obsidian of this? Obsidian Gaming? No, the note-taking thing. Okay. No. All right. All right. So think Evernote, Notion, all those things. That's what this is. Okay. It's open source but there's no central server anywhere. It's peer to peer. Okay. Which is nice. So I own my data. So that means I can't necessarily share anything. They've got a, they've got their roadmap listed below of what they're going to do later on. Like they're going to do shareable docs sometime this quarter in theory. We'll mm. see. Right. But it was very interesting. I set it up on my other machine and just did the initial installation. I didn't do anything else. Like I'm, I'm not really looking for a note thing, but I figured I'll try it out. And then I got my phone out, installed it on my phone, went and I pulled up the app on my machine and scanned the QR code, and then everything s started syncing over to my phone automatically. Okay. So I thought it was pretty cool. 
yeah. knowing that it was peer to peer and I nobody had my data at all. And there's no passwords. When you crank it up, when you start it up the first time, it gives you a nine word phrase, recovery phrase. And that's how you log in. Nobody has that phrase anywhere. It's generated when you do the initial creation. So there's a lot of things I like about it. But interesting. Yeah. I don't know that I'll ever use it. Here's where I think you'll find <laughs> more fun. What? That's such a we're completing each other's sentences. I say interesting, you say I don't know whether I will ever use it. <laughs> Here's one that I will never use, but this is one that you will use. Are you ready for this? Okay. It's, it's whiskey. No, not the drink. Okay. Whiskey. So what this is is wine supercharged. It's using Apple's okay. game porting toolkit under the hood. So what does this mean? You can run all these games on your Mac. Now think about this. You've got your Mac Studio. You want to play you want to play Grand Theft Grand Theft Auto 5 on your Mac Studio? Now you can. Yeah. But uh, look at that kind of Baldur why would they mention Bald Bald Baldur's, Baldur's Gate, Gate 3? That's a it's Mac just there. game. Well, okay, it may be. is there one? Okay, I don't know. I don't play games. Yeah. Okay, anyway. <laughs> but it's all Mac native. Debug, whatever. Nice. You can see. I'm actually going to try it. I want to see what the uh, licensing is now that it matters. GPL3. That's fine. Uh, when was the last time? <coughs> oh, yeah. Still, still relatively. So, familiar UI. Okay. It's just using wine under the hood, but. Making it make sense, I guess, in a in a Mac world. Nice. Okay. Three quick videos this week. You had Task File. Yeah, I love you, it. I love Task File. I use it all the time. It is. Yeah. Amazing. I I, I don't even remember why. It's been a, a long time ago. I tried Task File. I used it for a while, and I dropped kind of. In favor of something else, whatever that something else is, or I didn't. I don't even remember the reasons why I dropped from Task Pile. But then I gave it another try, try, and it's absolutely bloody awesome. I love it. It's my go-to now task definition format. I don't know how to say it, right? But uh, yeah, it's awesome. I, it's now it, the feelings in comments are mixed, kind of like, hey, this is great, and then. Quite a few comments. Yet another YAML. It is another YAML, but okay. So I'm not writing a 2000 line YAML. It's, I think the largest task file I have right now is, how big is it? Maybe 300 lines. I mean, I'm, it, I still have a mixture. I, 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 uh, I see. I, I have a similar feeling like uh, what I was saying before for pipelines and many other things. I don't think the task file is the right place for you to define everything. Kind of, we should still be using scripts. Scripts are the place where you define things. Task file is like orchestrator to me. They execute you know, this and then I execute that. I'm, I'm going to dis. I'm going to agree but disagree. If I have to write a bash file, a bash script. I'm probably going to write a task file first because I might need to create variations of whatever that script was going to be with the same commands. So then I can compose, going back to your orchestration, this is where we come back in alignment. Then now I can orchestrate all the different things because to be able to list out all the processes that are there easily, if I was to try to do that in a bash script, I'd be banging my head oh, against no. the wall. No. I was more referring kind of if one task would be more than a few lines for me and I and I exclude from that dependent tasks just to clarify right but if one task would be 100 lines I would probably then move it somewhere else right absolutely I'm yeah. talking about the single task right but if it's few lines few commands here and there they, I do it in task file as well yep if a single I mean, command per task again per, per task. task right to me if if the task extends beyond whatever my port size is right well unless i'm splitting it vertically right or horizontal whatever that is 
like a full full screen for my editor, as long as it fits in there, that's okay. I'm I'm fine. But if I'm having to scroll, I've gone too far. Exactly. That that's the way I feel about it. Hey, Moss, good to see you. Um, also, this week you had your second, I believe. Yep, part two of cross-plane providers and managed resources. Yeah, yeah, the part two, three more upcoming. And then uh, new ones will be released later, uh, depending on how 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 soon uh, alpha features in cross-plane graduate to beta. So you're going to be recording on beta features? I mean, beta in in the in our case and in case of kubernetes means that it's a stable api fair enough right okay that makes sense it doesn't change that does not mean that it graduated that it's proven by big players and big teams that it no has no bugs and all what's not that's a different thing right but beta is a stable api okay that makes sense and then finally with whitney this week you had Oh, by the way, sorry, sorry. Yeah. One more thing about the cross-plane thingy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, I already people know that I published the book as well. Uh, actually, all right. This one. Uh, uh, now, uh, the reason why I'm saying that is not because uh, I published the book, but in KubeCon there are 200 co hard copies uh, to give away. So if you're coming to KubeCon, uh, I think on Wednesday or something like that, books give away. Come, you get the book for free. And where do you get it for free at? In the crossplane booth? Uh, probably crossplane booth. Uh, it's something <laughs> I should know, but I don't. More than likely, I'll it's be redirected where that's happening. It's somewhere. I don't know. Right. But find me. Are you signing? <laughs> Are you signing? I, I'm signing. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Probably. <laughs> yes. Probably. <laughs> Most likely, yes. <laughs> okay. Anyway, and with Whitney this week, you had access. Where was she at this week? I didn't get to. She watch was it in this Paris. Week. She was already Paris. in Paris. But not for KubeCon. Uh, she's accompanying her brother's band who is touring in uh. Europe. So she's in Paris, Brussels, London, and then from London, she's coming back to Paris back for KubeCon. <laughs> Whitney, Whitney, Whitney. Okay. Um, <laughs> she was actually singing and playing in that band, but now she's uh, yeah. she's in software. So she's just uh, there. She's just a grunt now. That's that's good. Yeah. Um, anyway, access tools. So this is, is this the next to last one or was this the, or two from the last one? Because you guys are doing the final one at KubeCon, yes. correct? So there is one more with, choices to make. We call it misfits because <laughs> the security tools we had no idea where to put. Uh, and then that that's the, the last before the grand finale and grand finale is in KubeCon where we will go through all the choices that were made in this season. And that is going to be a live session, right? I mean, a live something somewhere. Actually, it's going to happen twice. Twice? Uh, we have a talk in KubeCon where we will go through some security choices. People will vote live and then I will implement live whatever people choose. Um, it's a talk we did already a couple of times for, for other areas. Uh, and then the episode, the YouTube last episode is going to be filmed at KubeCon floor. That should be quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, again, you know how prepared I am. I have no idea whether technically it will work, whether we will have Wi-Fi, whether microphones will work, how we will connect them, how we'll do it. I have no idea. But there is a strong, there is a chance that it will work. There's also a chance that it won't. But okay. There is a, I would say, a bigger Bell curve. Is that what you're that thinking? It won't. That won't work. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so I was patching, by the way, if you're running Sonoma or any Mac OS, all the patches came out yesterday. If, oh, I forgot about this. If you're, if you have an iOS device and you listen to the podcast through Apple podcast, 
player in 17.4, which came out yesterday, today or yesterday, transcripts are now in there. Now, the transcripts are not generated by us. Those are auto-generated by Apple. So, because I just don't have time to clean them up. <coughs> Cleaning up transcripts added hours upon hours upon hours. And just, I can't do it. I'm already having to edit enough, so. But anyway, patch out all your stuff today. So I, anyway, here's the, let me come back to the story. So I was patching this machine that I'm streaming from today. And I, once I got all that done, I went ahead and run. I have, a, I have a brew command that does all the work. I'll call it brewski. I actually found it on Stack Overflow years ago. It's just a string of brew commands. And I found this new cask called either Jan or Yan. And I don't know which it is. So let's see what it looks like. It says, do you think it's Jan or do you think it's Jan? Bring it, where, where do you see the Jan, Jan? What, what's going on meet here? Meet Jan right here. Uh, meet, meet Jan. Jan. I don't know. Jan. Jan, Jan. I don't know. Anyway. It is bringing AI to your desktop. So, okay. Well, how is this any different than the anything LLM? I don't know because I just found it literally Offline. 30 seconds. Huh? Oh, no. Sorry. I, I commented before you finished your sentence. Oh, okay. Nothing. Yeah. So... I'm willing to actually install this. I didn't mean to click on it. Let's, um, you want to try to do it live and see what happens just because? Yeah, let's do it. That's, that's what this machine is for because I can always nuke and pave it again if I need to. Okay, so let me go ahead and stop sharing here. This is literally, I have no idea what's going to happen. Of course, how's that any different than any other day? Uh, entire screen, we're going to do this screen here. Okay, and I'll share it again. All right. So, I know that's small. I'll pull this over here. And I'm going to say, I'm going to go back to brew. because First, you're going to increase the font of your terminal. I'm, I'm going to, oh, thank you. I forgot to do that. Well, it's just going to be an install, so it doesn't really matter. And then we'll go to that. But anyway. All right, so let's, I don't know if it's Jan or Jan. I don't know. I wish I knew. Okay, so there's the cask. Jan AI or Yan AI. I don't know. Okay. Brewcast Yan. Do 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 do. I have no idea. Okay, so well let's okay, now it's done. Alright, let me start it up. There he is. I don't know how I feel about the icon. Because it, it's the hand, right? It's the hand that's right here. That's the the app icon. I don't, I don't know how I feel about that. Somebody was lazy. Yeah. Designing uh, it, I guess. I, yeah, I don't know. So let's look at a couple things here. Let's see <coughs> if it's resizable. Yep, I can zoom. Is that pretty good? Yeah, that's okay. I can uh, set up a new thread. They call them threads. Okay, I don't have a local model yet. I'm down with that. Let's see what we can do here. I want to do a local model. My models. Okay, I'm doing all of this completely cold. Here, let's go to dark first. Let's, okay, that, that's better. Thank you. Um, yep. Okay, <laughs> at least there is a dark, right? Um, reset to factory. There are, oh, there's extensions that are built in. Yeah, interesting. Okay, let's see. That's the settings. There's the threads. That's the hub. See how to manually import models. But you can probably use one of the models that it offered over there, right? That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to do the Mistral Instruct right here. I'll just say download. Yeah. All right, so let's see what it says here. Oh, well, that's just the expander. Okay, that's fine. Download. Okay. Let's see what they have. They have Open Hermes. They have Trinity. Open chat, wizard coder. I don't care about those. Tiny llama, llama two. Okay. Yeah, they got so a it lot. It comes kind of. It's it already has ChatGPT downloaded, and then you can add additional ones. Yep. Well, it has I the service hook. The icon. Oh, this is nice too. Not enough RAM. So this is okay. sort of like LLM Studio, to me, or LM Studio, not LLM. 
Uh, recommended, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we'll just stick with Mistral for right now. Do, 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 do. No, I'm not on fiber, so yes, it takes a while for things to download. Okay, let's click on all models. Let's see what happens. Recommended, downloaded. Okay, I'm not worried about that. In the meantime, while you're downloading uh, mm -hmm. answer to, uh, to yep. Moz, yes, it does. Yep. There is a VS Code extension for task. Okay, nice toast there. Download complete. So let's go back to the thread. There's the model. Here's the system prompt. Since we've been learning this, these things, uh, what's the instruction? What do you want? It to, what do we want this to be? You're an artist. What kind of artist? You're. A, I don't know we cannot generate images with it, right? No, nope. no, nope. not with Mistral. Okay, you're a. You're a. You're a. You're a Kubernetes uh, alumni, alumni. Okay. You're not an expert, right? Okay. Good enough for now. Okay. What what message do we? What do we want to ask our assistant, Jan? What is the best way to scale up? Uh, scale applications in Kubernetes. Okay, so it's taking care of starting the model up. Okay, I mean this is yeah, that's the okay. basic. But let's I go back to the I want to go back to the extensions here for just a second. Where was that? That was here. Yeah, extensions. So there's an assistant extension. Okay, conversation. Okay, yeah, inference. Okay, inference. Yeah, inference. Yeah, model monitoring. Yeah, there's no real extensions. Like I was looking for, can yeah. I use it to reference outside, like make a web call or something? Um, actually, that answer is completely incorrect. Give me the correct answer. I'm in boss mode right now. <laughs> or you'll get fired. No, I will, or I will delete you from my machine. <laughs> it gives you exactly this. It apologizes and then it gives you exactly the same answer, right? That's so cool. <laughs> I apologize, but I will repeat. <laughs> That's not bad. I like the uh, I like seeing the memory and the CPU down here at the bottom. That's nice. <clears throat> I've seen other UIs do things like this. So I'll see about sliding things away so you can slide left and right. Choose the model. That's actually, that's not a bad user experience. Add a new thread. That's pretty cool. I can delete the thread. Oh, I can clean. Oh, that's nice. This is one thing I've run into with other UIs is you have to go back and delete, delete, delete all the way back up to the top if you wanted to reuse that thread. Now you can just clean it, either fully clean it or delete it. <clears throat> that's all right. Yeah. Not bad. Let's see what when, else they uh, have to I'm still missing, you know, my, my, the feature of AIs that I like the most is from Gemini that allows you to check the results to confirm whether they're true or not. And uh, by conf confirm, meaning uh, highlight the things that we confirmed, highlight that do not highlight things that might not be true and show me the references uh, in on internet, right? To me, right. that's very useful because that allows me to kind of, okay, now let me go further in a way, right? Yep, that was what we did with anything LLM, right? Because we uploaded all the, like we uploaded your PDF and- Exactly, we get... exactly. It's the same concept, except that yeah. kind of- Internet. In the case of Gemini, yeah. it's, it's internet. Yeah. Is what you upload in a way, right? Yeah, that's the reason why I went back over to the um, extensions because I wanted to see if they had any extensions mm -hmm. like that 
already here that we just didn't see. But they don't. Is there anything in advance that looks interesting? Data folder. Ooh, I don't like this. It just puts it right in your home directory by default. Yeah, I guess it's better than burying it somewhere. Clear the logs. Anything in the my settings, accent colors, models. Okay. Uh, what else do we have here? A local API server. Oh, okay. So there's the API server. So I could chat directly with that. But once you start the server, you can't chat. With the okay, that makes sense. System monitor. That's pretty cool. I still feel, and I think that I commented that uh, in last Friday, right? I still feel that uh, the right place for those things is not new apps, but wherever you are, whatever you're doing, right? In my case, the right place for those things must be VS Code, right? Or I don't know, if you're editing video, Final Cut Pro, or whatever you're doing, right? Yeah, I think that's... We don't want to separate. This is. I'm gonna get in trouble. I think. Because let's say that I'm 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 in Google Docs, right? And I would like to use AI. The only reasonable place for AI for for me to use AI when working with Google Docs would be in Google Docs. If I have to go elsewhere, copy and paste, or do something, uh, it's. I mean, it's fine. It's it's better than nothing, but don't, I don't think that that's that's where we we are going. What I'm really trying to say is that I feel that existing products will absorb all those independent AI project solutions companies. That's what I'm thinking too. I, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. Um. <clears throat> Well, it's, it was interesting. I figured, yeah, we'll take a look at it. It's always interesting to look at your, um, when you do a brew update and see all the new whatever it is. And just see what all's brought in. I'm trying to understand, let me go back here for just a second. Desktop app, there's a mobile app. Mm, offline and local first. I don't know. Let's look at the documentation. Just because we're here. Um, build an assistant. Ah. Oh, dang it. That will be interesting. Right? Because then I could say, okay, I want to build a web assistant to do my verifications for me. Or an extension. Is extension done yet too? No. Oh, it'd be. Now, when I think about it, since both of us are on Mac, mm -hmm. I would like to have Siri that works. <laughs> no, but wouldn't that be awesome? Imagine that it works yeah. as it doesn't. And instead of doing this or that kind of, hey, Siri, while you're working, right? Kind of like, uh, how do I scale applications in Kubernetes, right? And it just pops up. Poof. That would make too much sense. You know, I'm expecting this year's. <laughs> <What's that>? <laughs> um, I'm expecting this year's WWDC to be AI to the nth degree. Apple is, of course, rarely the first to market, but usually when they show up, it's leapfrog. Usually, that's the, Usually. that was Not correct all the time. phrasing because again, Usually. let me remind you, there is something called Siri that is the stupidest thing anybody ever did. It's just horrible. Yeah. We still have, hey, they're the, they took their time to design mouse. Yep. And that, that mouse can bottom. be charged all, exactly. The bottom. <laughs> that you cannot use while it's plugged. Come on. <laughs> so this is, I'm actually using a wired mouse here. Sorry to blind everybody. Yeah. Um, there's a reason why the cable comes out the front side. Exactly. Because you you have not, I ended up before I stopped using Mac mouse, Apple mouse. I had to have two, two mice, right? So that, because I'm not going to, when, it, when it's out of battery, I might still need to work. So I had two two mice, one charging, another one being used. 
Stupid. Yeah. I um. I so you watch- write most of the time, not always. Not always. Uh, I I switch to a Logitech Logitech mouse for my daily driver. Studio. I don't keep. I this, just don't want to chart this that dirty one. one. Oh man, that is such a great mouse. It's a hundred dollars, but it's worth every penny. <clears throat> and it's it's. Do you have the keyboard too? The MX Master keyboard? No, 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 no. Oh, you're still. Oh, you got. You have clicky clack keys. Okay. Clickety clackety, and I'm not changing it for anything except another clickety clackety one. Okay. I. I. They're fine. I just. They're just not for me. Maybe I just like quiet. Except in here, which I really like. It's. I never. It's always quiet for me when I type on my on my keyboard. Ah. Okay. What else? <laughs> Everybody else hears me typing, but just, I don't. But you don't hear it. Yeah, it's, you just <laughs> I blocked don't hear out. It. Um, okay, let me check one more thing here real quick before we go. All right, so next week and the week after, I don't even know what today is. The eight, so the 15th and the 15th, 7th, 22nd, we will not be here at all. Yep. Not here. Victor's traveling next Friday, I think. And the next Friday, he's probably getting ready to travel if he's not traveling. Um. And then we may not be here the week after that, which is the 29th, which is Good Friday this year. So, oh, boy, I'm glad I said that out loud. Sunday in the U.S., Daylight Saving Time starts. Daylight Saving Time doesn't start in Europe until March 31st, which is Easter this year. Three, counting you know three weeks of miserable meeting times. Yes, that's point. by design. We want to see how it went for you first, before committing to it. <laughs> that's alpha You're beta, pig. right? Yeah. <laughs> We're the guinea pig. And then at the end of the year is just a one week delay. I think we leave. Do we leave first? I can't remember if we leave first or you leave first at the end of the year. I don't remember. Anyway. Three weeks of messed up meetings. Just keep that in mind. Three weeks starting on Monday or Sunday if you work Sunday. Uh, oh, okay. Let me ask this. Alakona, you're in Hawaii, correct? Now I have to wait for like 10 seconds for the answer to come back. Yeah. The daylight seems on the island. Um, it's pointless. It's a, it is. I, I wish we would just pick one and stick with it. Most everybody I know exactly. wants to keep daylight. I would like to keep standard. I don't care. Just, just keep just, any. But just pick one. Like, right. I, I can just adjust. You get used to it kind of like, okay, so you wake up at eight or it's nine. Doesn't matter. Once you get used to it, it's fine. Look, when you get up like me in the dark anyway, it doesn't matter. It just, <laughs> it's, the upside for me is instead of getting up at 3.30, I'll be getting up at 4.30 because we sprung forward. So it'll make me feel better. But the problem is, is when I go to bed, the sun will still be up. And that stinks. That's why you have shades. Uh, sort of. They're not very good. They're not blackout. I wish they were. Anyway, okay. So we're gone for at least the next two weeks. Be watching Twitter, LinkedIn. That's when we post. And the Slack workspace. Because we post in the Slack workspace when we do shows. So I typically schedule these on Thursday before the Friday show. Uh, you're going to be attempting to live stream from KubeCon on Tuesday, or is it going to be a different day for that final one? Uh, do you know? Thursday, I think. Thursday. No, no, not Tuesday. No, for Whitney. I, I don't know. For it's, it's not Tuesday because KubeCon not is not Tuesday. Uh, right. Now, which day it is, Watch. I remember it just as well as I remember when I'm signing books. <laughs> you know what's happening in Paris. That's as far exactly. as you've gotten. Okay. Well, exactly. All right. Okay. Well, everybody have a great few weeks off from us. Um, adjust to time if you're in the U.S., if you do adjust to time. And uh, we will be back probably in three weeks. Probably. But there is small possibility we won't be. We'll see how it plays out. Victor, anything else? What? Okay. What are your... If people want to get up with you at KubeCon... What's the best way to contact you prior to that? Just like, hey, we'd like to... Twitter, LinkedIn, Yell. I mean, 
Slack? In the past, my answer to that question was, hey, find crossplane or upbound boot, they will know where I am. But that's not really true. It never been, <laughs> it never was. So, um, okay, here's the, the easiest way to find me during KubeCon is to go to a, a party at night. I'll be there. It, oh, there's a guarantee. We have, uh, uh, look for, okay, so here's the easiest way actually. Because I never know which party I'm going to go, but there is a party called Open Source Soare, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, which happens to be organized by Crossplane and, and uh, Caverna folks and Argo CD folks. And I will be on that one for sure. If you need an invitation or anything, then you find me. Then you, then, then you try to find me at, at the expo floor somewhere. Come to my talk. Uh, okay, yeah, find me ah. at my talk. That's the easiest way, exactly. You're doing just one talk, correct? Is it just the one with Whitney, or do you have one no, solo? No, two talks. I have two. two talks back to back. <laughs> just get it over with, right? Just do them, and then you're done. That would be nice. It's an adventure. It is an adventure. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great couple of weeks off, and uh, we'll talk to you again in a few weeks.